Mushtaq? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Very yeah. Much. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay, good morning. Uh, so this is uh, Mushtaq uh, Memon from United Nations Environment Program uh, for Regional Office in uh, Asia Pacific, based in Bangkok. So I'm going to introduce you how we approach the waste management for the curriculum in the schools. Though uh, we are working in Asia on the three aspects. One is the curriculum itself. Number two is the extracurricular activities. But the third, which is most important, is a green procurement in schools to reduce the waste management, especially plastics in lunches, uh, in stationery, and so on, and have a proper waste management systems in the schools so children can also experience that uh, it, schools are managing it well. And so let me go through this. So first entry point for children is the sustainable development goals, because now Everyone, I think, is aware and getting aware how we are creating the help, uh, happier and healthier societies. And then sustainable development goals are the key contribution uh, towards that. We are all the stakeholders, governments, private sector, consumers, community, and even children are promoting and supporting as we are nowadays hearing a very active children voice on that. So under the... STG 12, which is responsible consumption and production, which is a key that how we take our decisions for the consumption, how we think before ordering the food, before ordering the, even the Christmas gifts and toys and everything. So that is very important aspects for that. And that's why on, on, under STG 12, if you look on the some of the indicators which we introduced, that is looking on the 12.3, for example, on the food loss and food waste. As we see, there's a lot of a food waste and also in our lunches and everywhere. So it's very important for children to look on this a waste stream on that. Then other is uh, like recycling. That how much plastics, paper, aluminum cans, metals, uh, even furniture are creating and electronics that can be recycled. So to do that recycling, the first step is source segregation, that how we properly dispose those. So that is a, another important stream. And also making it aware that recycling is not the most efficient way because of, again, the energy efforts required, the environmental impact. So the most efficient is the reduced waste. So how we consume the things like uh, mobile phones for extended life, so instead of buying two over the three years, we buy one over the three years, for example. So this is very important approach, but then whatever is there has to be properly recycled. And first aspect for children or everyone of us to know is the quantity of waste, that how much waste we are creating. So it depends on the countries and the schools, I mean, uh, the communities, the GDP per capita is very important indicator that the rich countries create more waste but that's also very important that the rich countries also have more money to manage waste properly so that's why the rich countries are cleaner than the countries where the per gdp is much lower uh, but that quantity is very important for that aspect but next aspect is the composition because to do the recycling or addressing so when we look on the composition, the green waste is the biggest component. And up to the middle income countries, this is more than 50%. So that's why source segregation of the wet waste and dry waste is the key. Because on the one hand, then green waste is uh, non-hazardous. There's no contamination from heavy metals or plastics or others. So that can be composted, that can be go for the animal feed and so on. So that can be recycled properly. But then also the dry waste, if it's not mixed with the wet waste, so we don't have to put a lot of efforts or water to clean the plastics and paper before recycling. So that's important point. Looking at this to strategize how we are going ahead for recycling 
through the source segregation. And as I mentioned that uh, GDP plays very important role. Uh, on the one hand, it shows that a lot of waste is uh, generated in the high GDP countries, but more important also they have funds to manage that waste to create the recycling systems and so on. So for the curriculum, it's very important for children to see what are the methods to identify the amount of waste and also the composition of waste. How we do that, how we take the samples at what stage, how we even through the visual samples, we can manage to understand that, how by walking on the beach, we can observe what type of the waste is there, uh, what type of uh, packaging waste or other waste and so on or uh, walking in the uh, public parks and wherever. So this is very important way that how we introduce the methodologies for that level. And then also to look on that, that waste is an uh, environmental hazard, is the pollution. And based on the pollution pay principle, if we create more waste, we have to pay more for their management. So that is very important to look on the fee structures and so on, to help to reduce creating or generating of waste at first place. So this is uh, some of the data that uh, there's a lot of uh, money or funds are required to manage waste, including recycling. So that is the key to understand that it's not a free service. It's an environmental service, required a lot of a uh, cost and have a lot of impacts. And on the recycling goals and targets, we can see the different streams like a food waste, plastics, how the new technologies are coming to recycle that. So what are the different ways the countries do? And in Europe, for example, they have uh, comparatively higher recycling rates like Germany has a 56% and so on. So how those rates are there? What are the strategies in those countries are for recycling? Uh, including source segregation, including the high fees for the waste generation, including the private sector contributions or we call extended producer responsibility and so on. So that's why this higher recycling rates are achieved. But the starting point is at the generation, suppose in our schools, at our homes, if it's a source segregated, then higher rates are possible. So that's why the other uh, aspect for the curriculum is that assessment of the current system of waste management and gaps and how to improve that through different policies, through practices, behavior changes, technologies, and so on. Now, for specific, as I mentioned, that we can talk about the food waste, which is the one of the key waste stream, and that's why also in SDG2, like Zero Hunger, we can try to make it happen that food waste should be the top priority for that one. And that starts even from uh, not only after like a uh, cooked food, but even in the supermarkets, uh, all the expiry food or some is the ed still edible food, but because the chef is not good, so it's thrown and so on. So that's there. Number two stream is the plastics, which is huge. And as we all see now videos and uh, uh, news and uh, TVs that how the sea life is being affected, the fish, the turtles and everything and so on. So that is a huge impact, but we need to understand how much plastic we are creating. Now, even with the e-commerce like uh, Amazon and so on, how much packaging is coming and so forth, and how we are disposing of that one. So that is the key for the schools to understand. And that's where we want to know that how kids can contribute first to reduce the plastic waste, other towards the proper management of the plastic waste. And again, plastics is a hugely diverse, like there's a pet bottles and they have to recycle separately. But then there are other single use, uh, like uh, those plastic bags, the straws, straws is the most dangerous, or the airbirds and so on, which could be banned, for example. So depending on the types, so the kids can understand the different types and their impacts and the technologies or the difficulties in recycling for that one. So that is uh, uh, very important to look on that. So I will, uh, I think, stop on uh, this because this is uh, depending on the level of the schools, we can introduce the three R strategies, reduce, reuse, and recycle. But the fourth R, which we put is a rethink before ordering any food. So we see there's a lot of a sort of a set menu 
that is a cheaper than if we buy individually. But are we really uh, having that much appetite or at the end we leave some food? So that's very important to look on the rethinking and so on. So I will end my presentation here and for any other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mushtaq. Uh, it was a great presentation and I know that you have to run for another meeting. Yeah. Uh, so there is a request to all participants. Please uh, write the questions to Mushtaq on our chat. We will collect them and uh, he will answer on them uh, by mail. Uh, so we can collect the questions uh, on this. Uh, once again, request to everybody, please keep yourself muted. Uh, until there will be time for uh, asking the questions. And now uh, we ask Pramod to share his presentation. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, afternoon or evening, depending on which part of the world you are. And I think in, in India, we can just say namaste to you all. I will be sharing uh, the component of what we consider as waste literacy or the outcome that we want as part of this education process. Uh, so the first, I think, uh, concept that we need to understand is the concept of waste itself. And what do we mean by uh, waste? Uh, the definition that uh, we use, uh, and I agree to the most, is that it's a resource at the wrong place. So waste is something uh, which is at the wrong place, which we don't know how to use and uh, use in the system that we want to work with or the consumption pattern that we uh, are involved with. And the schools are important stakeholders because young people are more and more increasingly becoming the decision makers. And as we see around the world with the climate change and other issues, they are also demanding the change that we want in the world. And school years are the formative years for students. So the best time to engage and interact with them to initiate change. And uh, I work with a project in India and we found that the best age to make a difference is when they are 12 to 13. So 10 to 13 uh, is the best age when we are able to influence children, especially when we want them to have behaviors for their lifetime. And uh, I think we need to also understand that it's difficult to change behavior in adults and adolescents and it's slow uh, as we go on. But yes, it's not impossible because it will require more resources and a different kind of strategy. When we look at the literacy framework for waste management, we are looking at four dimensions. The first dimension of the literacy framework we need to understand is the competencies, basically different skills that are called upon and expressed for specific purpose here for uh, waste management. For example, the attitude and behavior are reflected uh, with critical thinking when a child picks up a piece of paper lying on the ground and uh, put it in the dustbin. Uh, knowledge of what is the problem and how it impacts uh, and the uh, linkages with the different issues of the environment. Disposition, this is the most important component of uh, literacy framework, any literacy framework, especially when we look at the waste management also, because this determines the intent to act or uh, my attitude, uh, which will determine ultimately the behaviors. And we all know that ultimately we want to change the behavior and see the impact and behavior. And one way to see is that how much or uh, what is the extent of problem in the school grounds. So, and the research is also saying that information knowledge alone does not translate into behavior. Disposition is the best indicator. And I, on the right, you can see the different components of within the waste management uh, literacy framework, especially in context of the knowledge. And we need to understand that uh, all together, when given over the years, it's not, it's just not to be given in a year, over the years, help in developing the right behaviors and the disposition along with the competencies that come with this process. The competencies that we are talking about are ability to this identify the environmental issue and litter is just one dimension of that issue but then why it is happening, what is the nature of the material 
and asking relevant questions uh, what is why what and how of it then analyze those issues to find the best solution investigate those environmental issues evaluate that what could be the best uh, solutions for it and then use evidence and experience to defend why that uh, action need to be taken and then ability to create and evaluate plans to do to handle the problem of waste in the knowledge dimensions we are looking at the physical and ecological system how waste connects to the system because we are talking a lot about waste landing up in sea and the problem it is creating in our water and land ecosystem the social cultural and political systems for example uh, we might see that in the western part of the world the cities are clean and the problem of the waste is not visible but then the economic system uh, transfer that problem to indonesia or other countries as problem uh, in terms of handling the waste also environmental issues which has two dimension in terms of knowledge of uh, the the different environmental situation that are arise because of the biophysical impacts uh, and the second is that from a human complex or the human nature that are there the awareness about and knowledge about multiple solution to environmental issues because each solution or every solution is not suitable for any context, every context so we need to find that what is the best mix uh, that we can have in our own context and active citizen participation and how people can come together and how other schools and other uh, countries have solved the problem also help in developing the solutions that we want disposition is the best indicator of the behaviors and which is basically uh, development of the sensitivity attitude concern and worldview taking personal responsibility of the problem and taking and making making uh, himself or herself as uh, a leader or a person who demonstrate the right behavior self efficacy is a good indicator of a behavior basically it is the belief that my action leads to a bigger change and we need to show that linkages whenever we are talking about any of the uh, environmental issue especially also in the waste management and if you remember uh, a, a, a cartoon that uh, talked about that this is the only this just one straw said green people so that is the linkage that we want to draw motivation and intention basically the where is the how and where is the motivation to take action at the best it has to be internalized and uh, personal motivation that leads to better results compared to the pressure from the peer or the norms or the laws that we want uh, uh, we or we have to change the world that we want and environmental responsible behavior is determined uh, we call it in terms of as an handprint which is an opposite concept of the footprint and takes it uh, look at the solution the solution the positive aspect of the problem so and this is the important thing that we need to see uh, as an outcome of the waste management project that whether the children are taking action that we use consumption or take action for waste minimization so saying no is the most important part then acts as a smart consumer how we can reuse recycle recycle reduce or upcycle anything or any uh, product that we get I remember uh, the thing that i said in the beginning waste is a resource at the wrong place increase awareness of action that supports sustainability follow the rules norms to make systems like waste management transportation function every country has its own waste management system from segregation into two bins to five bins and we need to understand those systems and uh, work according to that and uh, participate in the improvement of the services and systems and as an active citizen give feedback train people see that if systems are not working how we can make them uh, better and we, when we look at uh, the hierarchy and uh, the waste management uh, or the literacy uh, waste waste management literacy uh, is very closely associated with the concept of circular economy and when we look at uh, as we move from recycle and recover to refuse and reduce we are in a way supporting the concept of circular economy which is uh, now becoming a major integrative concept for all most of the environmental issues that we have I give you an example that how a circular economy concept work uh, is the first example is that uh, we can extend the life of a product by sharing it passing it on and uh, textbook or books are is a good example where uh, when we instead of each one of buying us buying the book uh, we have the book in the library or we just pass it on or share it with others when we have used or read it 
The second is, is the material from which it is made and how different waste materials or different uh, waste of uh, one industry can be used by another industry to produce uh, a paper. A third is that how do we have a recycling system and uh, try to uh, see that how we can use the material which is paper again and again. So being, bringing behavior change, uh, there are maybe different methods and techniques. Uh, for example, uh, knowledge is a, uh, to increase the knowledge, uh, we need to see that uh, what kind of information we can give in the classroom. And this is technically done uh, uh, in a school system and importance of segregation and demonstration uh, demonstrate to student segregation of age and kind of situation. The second technique is persuasion, uh, basically persuading other people and ability to have that confidence and communication. And then uh, reward and coercion are other two uh, ways of changing behavior. And we can use uh, role modeling, capacity building, communication, and enablement as part of uh, doing this uh, method. The idea is that it, it has to be active learning, just not transfer of knowledge, but practice and getting engaged with the issue. And also we need to see that how those uh, individual action lead to change at the school level and how do we influence other students, other children, and then ultimately the families and the families uh, contribute uh, in changing the ways the, the society thinks of waste uh, at community level or at state level or a country level or as one or that we talk about. And seven step processes with all the materials that we have help in that process of continuously uh, bringing about the improvement that we want. So thank you uh, for uh, hearing me out and uh, look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Pramo. And uh, Pramo will be with uh, us until the end of this webinar. So. Please think about questions that you have for him, and uh, he will be able to answer them later. Uh, and for now, we would like to go back to uh, some practical um, uh, examples from our teachers uh, that are with us. And uh, please, Yelena, can you start with your presentation? Uh, Yelena, you need to unmute yourself. Yelena, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, good, good morning. I'm Jelena Lutic. I'm a biology teacher from Podgorica in Montenegro and I'm representing grammar school Slobodan Šperović. Uh, today I'm going to give a short presentation. Just a second. This is not working. Just a second. I cannot move the slide. Everything just freezed. Okay, a uh, short presentation about uh, selective waste collection and uh, members of biology and ecology section uh, accompanied with uh, their teachers Mariana Lakovic and Sanja Ognjanovic visited the recycling center and landfill at Konik Podgorica with the aim of establishing co cooperation uh, about selective waste collection in our school um, and uh, since this May we have started with selective waste collection in our school. Um, students uh, during this visit students learn about the importance of uh, proper waste uh, to uh, select, collect, and recycle waste. 
And after this visit, we conducted a survey uh, to examine whether students had uh, existing knowledge about Phylaxy Waste Collection. And uh, um, there was a total of 761 respondents. And the first question on this survey was, have you heard of Phylaxy Waste Collection? 85.3% uh, uh, said uh, no, and 14.7% uh, of students said Yes. The second question was, does the grammar school perform selective waste collection? 73.9 uh, said no, and 26.1 said yes. On the question, can selective waste management protect the environment? 92.2 uh, uh, said yes, and 7.8 said no. On the question, are you familiar with composting? We had the equal outcome, 51.4 said yes, and 48.6 said no. On the question, can we use composting at the grammar school? 65.2 said yes, and 34.8 said no. Uh, the question uh, was, would you like to be involved in composting project? We also had equal outcome, as you can see, 52.6 said no, and 47.4 said yes. Does the grammar school provide recycling option? Options, uh, again, equal outcome, 53.2 said yes, 46.8 said no. On the question, are there containers for selective waste collection in your neighborhood? 66.9 uh, said no, and 33.1 said yes. We asked the question, are there recycling centers in your neighborhood? 73.9 said no, and 26.1 said yes. On the question, would you take paper recycling action in your school? Majority said 81.7% yes, and 18.3% uh, said no. Uh, our school uh, is now equipped with selective waste garbage cans, and they're large and colorful, and they're usually uh, placed in hallways and uh, highly um, volume areas uh, and all, all students are informed by eco school uh, board members about proper waste disposal and importance of select selective waste collection implementation at the school and uh, we think that school um, selective waste collection program provides learning experience not only for students but for um, uh, teachers staff uh, administration and also parents and all teachers in our school are obligated to discuss selective waste collection with their students as part of cross uh, subject topics and our students um, um, also prepared some videos because they saw uh, how important is this for environment and you'll see the video now in the first video um, student shows uh, that we shouldn't mix waste and he shows us the proper way uh, to dispose of uh, paper waste In the second video, a student explains that the best way to reduce environmental pollution is selective waste collection. And he shows us the way to save the space in this basket uh, by crushing the bottle. Um, his way is uh, selective waste disposal of a plastic bottle. And this is his way to dispose it. so he could save the space. This video is interesting because uh, this student gave us interesting information that uh, from 500 used cans, a new bicycle can be made. And he also shows us a proper ways uh, to dispose a plastic can. And last video, 
Uh, this one is very interesting because it shows how any individual can uh, make an impact uh, to raise awareness on uh, selective waste collection, which is very important. And this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you all. Thank you, Yelena. Uh, you can now uh, wait for the questions from participants and stop sharing the screen. And uh, we would like to ask uh, uh, ah, yes. Olivera to join us and have a presentation. Olivera, are you here? Yes. Okay. So please uh, start with your presentation. Okay. Hello everyone. I am Olivera Lucic, biology teacher in secondary economy school, Nikšić Montenegro. How do we design and manage waste at school level? We strive to enhance the knowledge and skills of teaching staff both in the approach itself and the further communication with students and school management as well as with the wider community. Through interactive workshops aimed at sharing knowledge and experience and developing ideas teachers provided with specific guidance that will help them to organize the long-term system of proper waste management at school, including cooperation with the recycling center, partnership with civil society organization and media promotion. A study visit to a recycling center during which students have direct communication with employees additionally provides an opportunity to obtain information related to the selection and preparation of waste materials for export and to establish cooperation in the procurement of raw materials. The school has dedicated containers for internal use to separate plastic, metal and paper, which allows them to selectively dispose of various types of waste with the facility itself. We encourage the use of recyclable water bottles, donate them to a paint and varnish manufacturing center in which they pack their products and we reduce harmful plastics waste as well as use fossil fuels. Support from the school leadership has been necessary and has led to increased students' interest and level of knowledge as well as incredible creativity. During the school year and especially during the new year holidays, we make unique exhibits made of waste that are made during creative workshops. Some were exhibited at the Eco Bazaars during which the general public could enjoy unusual settings, the value of which was invaluable. We insist on giving an artistic note to waste materials as well as giving students the opportunity to express themselves creatively. Waste can thus be harnessed, thus significantly increasing the value of waste. This is another value of our approach that influences a completely different approach and fosters the entrepreneurial spirit of both students and teachers and school management. We encourage other schools and institutions to take actions. At the end of the school year, we also conduct an evaluation of participants and others to realistically review all aspects of activities and plan the future ones, thus completing the year of waste management implementation in the best possible way. Thank you.
Thank you, Ramona. Uh, thank you, Olivera. Uh, it was very interesting. And please stay with us for the questions at the end. And we would like to ask uh, Ramona, our uh, last presenter for today, uh, if you can start with your presentation. So, hello, everyone. My name is Ramona Mercia. I am a geography teacher at Gozo College Middle School and I've been involved in the Eco Schools program for the past 10 years. Today I am going to share with you um, an overview of how we integrate um, waste management across the curriculum. So basically um, uh, we take a whole school approach. We first set up the Eco Schools Committee um, uh, discuss the team, carry out an audit, design the action plan, and get everyone involved. In this slide, we can see some photos of uh, the students who are forming part of the committee. Then they carry out an audit. The audit can, be, can take place at school or else online, where uh, the students prepare a form, which is then sent to all the students, teachers, and parents. When the data is collected, we analyze the data from the audit and we share the findings and get everyone on board through morning assemblies. Students forming part of the Eco Schools Committee present their findings and explain the theme which will be discussed during a particular year. The Eco Schools Notice Board is a very important medium at school where um, the students can get informed about all the activities taking place. The um, results are displayed over there, also the activities which will be taking place at school. So, how do we get all the students involved at school? It's not just the students forming part of the Eco Schools Committee, but every student and also all the teachers are involved. If, for example, we are going to tackle the theme of um, waste management, how to reduce waste, students do research. They um, go outdoors to collect data. They also, for example, um, prepare um, charts to be used during exhibitions or open days to be held at school. In the slide over here, we can get an idea of how students got outside to collect data or collect material, which will be needed to carry out the activity, the project. For example, here in this photo shows um, uh, one team, a particular team we focused on, which was foraging. We promoted the use of wild plants, so reducing waste and giving ideas of how wild plants can be used. Here we can see photos of students doing cleanups or also um, conducting litter surveys. Another project which we did at school which involved waste management was when students got involved on what we called going on green business where we gave um, uh, ideas on how waste material can be reused to create new objects. Students got hands-on activities, again, different students from all the school, to create hand new, new products. And here we can see students using the foraged leaves, which they collected when they went outside and prepared recipes, innovative recipes. Another aspect which we were really work on um, when tackling waste management is that we reach out to the wider community. All these, um, uh, all this research, all this discovery, we don't just keep inside the school, but we try to involve the wider community so as to share these um, findings and give ideas for other people to use. And um, we organize open days at school. We also prepare and um, carry out community action days where students actually go out of the school and give out material to inform people and give ideas on how they can reduce waste. 
also we reach out to the wider community through radio and TV programs and through international collaboration. Again, here we can see photos um, showing the involvement of the wider community when they were invited at school to learn about our findings and when the students go and share their opinions with other students. Here we can see photos when students went on, on radio programs and when they were also filmed for local TV programs, again with the idea of involving the wider community. Here we can see the students when they went out to inform the general public on how they can reduce waste by using, for example, reusable bags. Um, another point which I, which I mentioned is the international collaboration. Through Skype calls, through joint projects, we work with other schools abroad. It's not just local schools, but we try to collaborate with schools from Turkey, Poland, Spain, even Italy. So we can share our ideas, learn from their ideas, and together we work collaboratively to reach this ultimate aim, to reduce waste. So as you can see, all these activities um, link various subjects. It's not just English, maths, ICT, physical education. It's not just indirectly when, for example, we go outdoors, we learn about the natural environment, but also directly, for example, English teachers, they help students write their articles, which then they can present for the young reporters for the environment. The last thing which I would like to point out is the two international projects which we try to incorporate with our project are the eTwinning, which is an online educational um, platform which links European schools together, and the GLOW program, which is an international science and educational program, which gives the opportunity to students to collect data, upload their data, so that the, the data that our students collect is used by other students and scientists worldwide. And that leads to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, Ramona, thank you very much for this fantastic presentation. And uh, now we have time for like four questions from participants uh, to all presenters. Yes, and please uh, stop sharing with us. And uh, some technical information to all participants. If you want to raise the question, please unmute yourself for a moment. Uh, make the question and then uh, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, follow with, uh, with a discussion to each presenter. Are there any questions? Yes. One of the questions was uh, people were discussing uh, how and uh, how much amount of waste is uh, generated per capita uh, per year, uh, per capita kind of thing and per day. Uh, kind. And this is a graph from uh, World Bank uh, which shows uh, 0 0.2.49 grams per day per capita to maximum is 1.5 kgs in a day. And you see the North America, Australia, uh, Mongolia, some part of the Scandinavian country that you see, and Ireland generate the most waste uh, globally. And Africa and Asia, if you see, are amongst the least. And uh, that is also to do with poverty. Uh, and the, the, so it's not that they are doing a good work or system, but the consumption level is low, and, and the type of products that they use have less packaging. Uh, is there another question that someone would like to raise for the presenters? So one of the questions was in terms of Scandinavian countries and we see that Scandinavian countries are uh, not so, uh, they manage their waste, collect it better, but then uh, in terms of production of waste, minimization, it is not the good country. And then I saw some countries, uh, some of the questions around the hazardous waste management. The hazardous waste are many types. So it can range from nuclear waste to chemical waste, that the batteries that we have, uh, uh, that we use, 
and also the hospital waste and the infectious waste. So all this waste which can harm uh, and have a high potential to harm people uh, are considered as part of that. And then each of them have a different way of being uh, handled. Uh, and in terms of uh, for a special categories, especially chemicals and that in, uh, the waste, uh, there is sanitary uh, lined uh, special lentil side that are that are used where it is stored permanently. There is no solution to it, and for that reason, we need to find solution for those kind of waste. The hospital waste, which is infectious waste, uh, particularly is incinerated, is burned because uh, that's the only way we can uh, remove the, the, uh, the bacteria or the virus that can cause infection and the germs that are associated with it. Pramod already answered for a few of the questions that were uh, pointed on chat. Uh, do you have any other questions? Anybody who would like to ask uh, to the teachers that have the presentations or to promote? No, I don't see them. Sorry, can yes. I? Yes, and because I can see that someone asked me a question. Maybe I can answer. Yes, please go. So one of the um, participants asked how we evolve all teachers. So basically at school we have a house system where the students are grouped in different um, uh, houses and the teacher who leads that particular house is involved because she has to coordinate the activities for the students. So even when we organize an outdoor activity, we get some teachers involved. When we have an open day, Teachers, different teachers are involved. When we have a cooking session, other teachers are involved. So in that way, um, teachers are involved um, because of course we need supervision with the students and uh, like this, everyone gets on board. I'm not sure if I answered the question like that. Donetsk. If you would like to ask other questions, please feel free. Yes. Um. What the second question? There is one more. Okay, okay cool. So, sorry, I had a link. You can uh, please uh, use www.menti.com and code 563192 to register uh, your response. Thank you. I can already see uh, some responses. So there are five people who have. Responding. Give, let's give them one more minute or 30 seconds. So 30 seconds more and then uh, I go to the next question.
and this is uh, you can type in uh, what did you find most useful and we are just having two minutes for this one uh, that what did you find the most useful in this Uh, you can continue with uh, your answers. Uh, we are very grateful for all feedback and also okay. some uh, from some technicalities. Uh, we are recording this webinar, so it will be available online for all people that registered for the webinar and you will be able to watch it later. Also, uh, if, you, uh, if you wish to have a diploma for participation from the webinar, uh, you can send a mail to uh, Shawen, uh, who's uh, uh, in our office, or to me. After the webinar, you can find the address on our website when the webinar is uh, presented, and uh, you can ask for the certificate. Also, uh, we will be going to continue those webinars in the future. And uh, if any of you is interested also to be our presenter in the future on a different topic, or you have an idea of a topic that would be useful for you, for your school, for other teachers, please also send a mail to me. You, you will find the contact on our website. You can also point it on the ch on chat and we will contact you in the future as well for your presentation. Uh, I would like to invite you for another webinar that will be in January. This webinar is uh, for students, so you can also ask your students to join, but it is as well for you as teachers. And the, the topic of the webinar is how to promote environmental stories to larger audience. And it's very important that this, what you are doing as a school activities on uh, environmental issue, it's so important to promote them to other people, but uh, all of them, they will be involved and they will influence the change. We would like to show how to promote, how to work with social media, how to promote the stories on social media and through other um, journalistic tools. So I strongly mm -hmm. encourage you to join our webinar in January. You can, the registration is open on our website. And uh, for now, it's, uh, that's it what we have for today. We are still collecting your answers, but thank you so much for your participation in the webinar. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>